<laughs> yes, good morning everybody. Glad you, you glad that you could join us and uh, I know this is a little bit unusual and uh, Teresa and I and Mike are here. Mike's in the sound booth so we're doing that social distancing thing but uh, it is good to be able to worship together and that's what we intend to do this morning. Uh, we intend to just uh, sing together and worship and uh, and uh, praise the Lord and thank Him for His care and His watch over us. Um, we're not sure how long this is going to uh, be as far as not being in person in the church, but we will continue to do this and worship in this way and thank you for joining us. We're going to start by singing. We're going to sing some songs and, uh, and then we're going to, uh, so please join in. The PowerPoint will be behind and... Uh, and then we're going to, uh, and then we're going to hear the little bit of message. We're going to have a prayer time together, and then we'll share communion together. So if you haven't got that prepared yet, uh, if you haven't got a piece of bread or a cracker, and uh, and also uh, a glass of juice or water or whatever you have there, uh, you can prepare that for when we do that. That'll be kind of toward the end. But let's sing together. Jesus, King of Heaven, we're going to sing this together.
that are dealing with challenges, and we know there are many dealing with financial situations now, financial uncertainties. And Lord, we bring those to you, and we thank you that we can trust you with those things. And Lord, we know that there are many who are sick, and we pray for your healing. Lord, we pray that you would do something just extraordinary in this time and place. Lord, I believe you could stop the virus like that. Lord, I thank that you are, you are the mighty one. You are the God of heaven and earth. Lord, help us to be faithful in caring and, and sharing and being in our community, maybe not physically, but Lord, maybe through a phone call, through a, a, a dropping off a parcel on somebody's doorstep, and going to the grocery store for them if they can't get out. Lord, help us to be your people in this time and in this place. Lord, your people have been through many things, many things in history. And Lord, this is the time for us to be an example to the rest of the world of love and compassion. So Lord, help us to be that. Help us to be those people. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you love us deeply and powerfully. You are our God. We are your people. We thank you that we can come to you with whatever we're struggling with and dealing with. And Lord, whether that's physical or whether that's mental or whether that's a, a financial or addictions or whatever that is, Lord, we can come to you and you are a God of hope and strength. And you pour that hope and strength into our hearts and into our lives. We pray for our families. Lord, we pray for those who do not yet know you and maybe are questioning at this time and place. Lord, would you reveal yourself to them in a real and powerful way? I just have the feeling there's going to be people that are going to come to you as a result of this time. And I thank you for that, Lord Jesus. Lord, we just want to allow just a few moments of quiet in this time together this morning. A time that, Lord, we can spend with you, but spend also kind of, not in personal, but in person, but together in, in the church and in, in with you. So we take that time, Lord. pray together the prayer that you taught the very first disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, it seems pretty short today, and uh, that was pretty quiet around here. Usually, I'm he used to hearing verse voices when I'm praying that prayer, but uh, that's okay. I'm glad. I hope you, hopefully, you prayed along with me. Well, today we are going to celebrate a communion or the Lord's Supper together. Uh, so if you haven't prepared anything yet, like I said before, you, and you'd like to participate, just uh, grab a piece of bread or cracker and a small glass of juice or water and have it ready for, for, the, for our time together of breaking bread. I'm wondering how your week has gone. You know, I thought with staying home, around home, and most things canceled this week, that I would get a lot more done, but it seems that I've been keeping busy and between visits from our grandkids when Sarah went grocery shopping and a, a roof leaking on one of our houses and a toilet that wasn't working properly, well, everything that I had allegedly planned in my mind I just didn't get accomplished this week. I, I did get one thing done, though. I got a whole bunch of wooden soap dishes made. This is an example of one of those wooden soap dishes. It was kind of a fun thing to do for those who are into woodworking. This is made of white pine. 
And uh, it's a pretty cool little soap dish, but I think I made about 200 of those. And it was kind of fun figuring out how to make them and how to get them done. And uh, the other thing that I did a lot this week is wash my hands. I, you know, I usually wash my hands a lot, but uh, yeah, don't get me wrong about that, but, uh, but I am conscious more about doing it often. And it may become part of all of our lives from this point on. You know, back in Jesus' day, they did wash their hands, but they also washed each other's feet. Now back then, most people wore sandals or, or went barefoot, so after a long day of walking in a hot and very dusty environment, when coming into someone's house, there would be water to wash your feet, and often a servant would have the foot washing job. And now can you imagine on your resume answering the question, what was your last job, and the answer being foot washer. I'm thinking you probably wouldn't get you a many executive work positions, but, but then maybe it should. Uh, foot washing was not a job that, that the apostle or the disciple Peter or any of, of Jesus' other disciples wanted to do. And on the day of the Pas Passover feast in the upper room, it seemed that none of them wanted to have any part of this task. To be a foot washer, you see, was to be a servant or someone who was of lowly standing. But as Jesus was planning on going to the cross and as he was preparing for suffering for our sin and paying the price for our wrongdoing, he had one more lesson to teach those who call him master and teacher. I want to read from the book of John chapter 13 today. And if you have your Bibles, you can follow along with me. It'll be on the screen behind me as well. Mike is going to put it up there. I'm reading from the Bible version called The Voice. I, I kind of like the conversational nature of this translation. And we're going to start by reading verse 1 and reading to verse 14. And I may drop down a little bit further uh, to read about how Jesus instructed his disciples about communion as well. But let me just set this up for you. An upper room of a house had been prepared for Jesus and his disciples to celebrate the Passover. And this was a yearly tradition to remember God's deliverance of the people of Israel from the slavery of Egypt, uh, kind of on the scale of Easter is to us, maybe even larger. But it is also the moment that Jesus knew that his sacrifice from sin was going to happen shortly. And as we read, you can see how he is preparing both himself and his friends for what is about to happen. I want to start by reading at verse 1 of John chapter 13, and it goes like this. Before the Passover festival began, Jesus was keenly aware that his hour had come to depart from this world and to return to the Father. From beginning to end, Jesus' days were marked by his love for his people. Before Jesus and his disciples gathered for dinner, the adversary filled Judas Iscariot's hearts with plans of deceit and betrayal. Jesus, knowing that he had come from God and was going to God, stood up from dinner and removed his outer garments. He then wrapped himself in a towel and poured water in a basin, basin and began to wash the feet of the disciples, drying them on his towel. Simon Peter, as Jesus approaches, he says, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus, Peter, you don't realize what I am doing, but you will understand later. Peter, you will not wash my feet now or ever. Jesus, if I don't wash you, you will have nothing to do with me. Peter, well then wash me, but don't stop with my feet. Cleanse my hands and my head as well. Jesus, listen. 
Anyone who has bathed is clean all over except for the feet. But I tell you this, not all of you are clean. He knew that one with plans of betraying him, which is why he said, not all of you are clean. And after washing their feet and picking up his garments, he reclined at the table again. Jesus, do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and truly that is who I am. So if, if your Lord and teacher washes your feet, then you should wash one another's. I am your example. Keep doing what I do. And we're going to stop reading there for now. And I say, Peter, 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 you just can't help yourself, can you? One moment you're saying no way to Jesus and the foot washing thing and the next you're saying yes please and don't stop there. But you, you're missing the point of what Jesus is talking about. It's not just about washing feet. It's also about having your heart cleansed from sin. And that's why Jesus said to Peter, you are not getting it now, but you will later. Because the only way for Peter's heart to be cleansed and made right was through the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. As the hymn writer wrote, there is power in the blood of Jesus. As this was true of Peter, it is also true of us. That the only way our heart can be cleansed and made right is through the cleansing power of Jesus' blood. And it is by the power of Jesus' death and sacrifice that we can receive forgiveness and cleansing and have our sins removed. I find it powerful that Jesus saw dirty feet as an opportunity to teach and be an example to his followers. He said to those early disciples, I am your example. Keep doing what I do. Now, I don't think he specifically meant to wash each other's feet when he said this, but he did mean to serve each other and care for those around us. You see, Jesus was both the Son of God, the creator of the universe, and servant. And to his incredible resume, he added foot washing. He invites those early disciples, and us too, to keep doing what he did, to serve to humble ourselves, to remember who we are in Christ, because we are the sons and daughters of God, but we are also those who care for our family, our friends, our neighbors who are in need and struggling. I'm thinking that in the next while, we are going to have increased opportunities to serve and to help those who are facing challenges and uncertain times. And I hope as a church, and as a community of Jesus followers, we will step up and make a difference. It's not only on the government's shoulders. This has always been what the church is good at, being a lighthouse, a place of refuge in times of storms, being help and hope for those who are struggling. And I'm not talking about the building here. I'm talking about the people of God, the church. Peter was having a hard time understanding what Jesus was doing because he still thought it was about him. He must have been asking the question, where is that foot-washing servant person after all? And he must have forgotten the words that Jesus had said to the disciples. A short time before this, he said, I did not come to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. You see, really Peter should have been washing Jesus' feet, but he didn't. So the Son of God, the Chosen One, the Creator of the universe, picked up a wash basin and a towel and added foot washing to his list of accomplishments. I came to serve and give my life as a ransom for many. Well, just after this foot washing thing happened, Jesus and his disciples celebrated the Passover together. In the very same room and at the very same time, 
was when Jesus took a piece of bread and broke it and shared it with his disciples and said, this is my body, my body given for you. Do this to remember me. He was about to fulfill the words that he spoke of giving his life as a ransom for many by allowing his physical body to hang on a wooden cross. He was about to take on his faultless shoulders your sin and my sin. Peter's sin, the other disciples' sin, so that anyone who would receive this gift of forgiveness would no longer be bound by guilt and shame of their sinfulness. At the end of that meal, the Bible tells us that Jesus took a cup of wine and said, this cup, which is poured out for you, is the new covenant made in my blood. Now that word covenant is another word maybe a stronger word for contract or agreement. Jesus was saying there is a new, strong contract between God and mankind, and it was about to be established. And that contract was written and sealed through His blood being poured out in sacrifice for us. That contract would alter the world far more than a coronavirus can. That contract meant that through accepting Jesus' sacrifice and inviting Him into our lives, you and I can be free from sin, free from fear, and live here and now and into eternity into, in a powerful and personal relationship with God. And three days, three days after He died in our place, He rose from the grave. Death was defeated. The contract was established. The world had been changed. The enemy, the devil, was on the run. It is why we celebrate communion. Yes, we remember. And yes, we are eternally thankful for Jesus' suffering and death. But we also rejoice in the fact that his victory, that the victory has been won, and we are no longer slaves, but free by the blood of Jesus. We now have a new identity. Because of that contract, we are sons and daughters of God. We have a new destination. When we die, we live eternally with our Father and with our brother, Jesus. Joint heirs in Christ, it says. He served by paying the ultimate price. And now we join into that contract and can be free and without fear. And while we are here in this time and this place, we follow Jesus' example for us, which is to serve, to show the compassion of God to those around us, in the hope that they too may become participants and partners in this life-changing covenant. We love because He first loved us. Well, in a moment, we are going to share communion together. I know this isn't usually the way that we do it, but please join in as you can. We will start with a piece of bread, and then take a moment or two of silence as we remember how Jesus allowed his body to be broken for our rescue from sin and fear. Will you trust him today to take away your worry and fear? After we have eaten the bread together, we will each take our cups and drink the juice or water or whatever you have. And remember that Jesus poured out his blood for our forgiveness. He paid the price so that you and I can be clean. He took the judgment for our sin upon his shoulders. Please know that it was Jesus himself that established this sacred and symbolic act. He commanded his followers to eat the bread and to drink of the wine, in our case, juice, and uh, that were symbols of his broken body and his blood spilled for us. This is Jesus' table. The spiritual feast are for all of his followers. So if you have turned away from your sins and have believed in Jesus as your rescuer and savior, you're welcome to eat the bread and drink the juice and by faith take in the life of Jesus Christ. Let's not forget that it is a remembering 
of his death and suffering of our Lord Jesus, and also a symbol of his coming again. So as followers of Jesus, although we are separated by space, still we are one, at one table with the Lord. Let's pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who because of your huge mercy gave us Jesus to suffer death on the cross for us, we humbly ask that as we receive the bread and juice according to his instructions, we remember and proclaim that he suffered and died. Lord, may we also fully participate in the benefits of his sacrifice. Father, we're reminded that the same night that our Lord was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Do this whenever you drink in remembrance of me. Lord, this morning we come to you with humility and faith as we take part in these holy symbols through Jesus Christ our Lord and all God's people said, Teresa and Mike to come up and we're going to, I'm going to extend my hand, we're going to take a piece of bread and we're going to eat it together, remembering that Jesus died for us. It was probably a flat bread like this that Jesus and his disciples were eating. And the host of the meal would take the bread and tear it apart and then pass pieces to his to those who are at the table with him. So that's why we take a piece of the bread. We read, together we'll eat the bread and we remember that the body of the Lord Jesus was broken for you and for me. So take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you. that same Passover meal, at the very end of the meal, Jesus took a cup of wine and shared it with the disciples and he said to them that this is a symbol of the new covenant that, has, that is being established through my blood. So as we drink this together, we remember that Jesus poured his life out on a cross for you and for me, for our cleansing and for our forgiveness, and to bring us into this family of God that he created by his death on the cross. The blood, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you, drink this in remembrance of him. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love for us and for, for how 2,000 years ago it took you to a wood, wooden Roman cross there to pay the price, to take upon you the judgment of our sin. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for doing that and for now how that, that action has brought us into new life in you, into this new covenant, this new agreement that we become the sons and daughters of God. We become your children, Lord. Because of your cleansing, your redemption, you bought us back. Lord, we are eternally grateful for that. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for these symbols that 
and help us remember the sacrifice that you did on our behalf. We pray this and thank you in your wonderful name, Lord. Amen. We're going to close our time together this morning by singing together Jesus Messiah, a song that we often sing, communion, but uh, just a great song as we think about the words and think about our Lord, our Savior, our King, the one who loves us and continues to be in our lives.
Lord, you know what each of us are going through. And I thank you that your Holy Spirit is with each one who is watching, who is participating, and who is here today. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love. And we pray your blessing upon each person and upon each family represented. We pray this in Jesus in your wonderful name. Amen. Well, have a great week. And thank you for for participating, and, and uh, thank you for Mike and Teresa also for helping out today. We are still around, though I'm not in the church very much. I'm still here, and uh, I'm at home, so you can always reach me there if you have a question or need a word of prayer. I'm happy to do that. Thank you, and God bless.